okay, what we're doing here now is we have a diver in the water. You should be searching the, uh, the section that they say they saw the vehicle. Uh, it's supposed to be either an SUV or uh, it might be a Volkswagen um, station wagon upside down. So we're going to see if we can find it. Uh, once we find it, we're going to mark it. So we can that he found the location. We're going to mark it and then we'll get the other divers in to uh, hook it up with the chain and pull it out. Hey, bud. Up, How's it going? I appreciate it, man. Uh, apparently, we got an old Volkswagen, kind of station wagon. Gotcha. It's upside down. All right. It's easy to hook up. I'm going to have my guys go down there and park it. All right. Um, then we're going to tie a line to the uh, vehicle to the front of my truck so we can take the hook down. All right. So they have to walk it down. Okay. And then we'll just hook it up and then we'll take it out. Sounds good. I'll be getting the lines ready. Okay. You guys a got a chain or you need a chain? No. Uh, yeah, let me have your chain because I'm going to use that to hook up the vehicle. Okay. And I'll run a line just to slide the hook down okay. so they don't have to carry it. Okay. All right. Let so the market, we'll start doing what we do here. Okay, no Uh, well, a lot of people with insurance frauds and, you know, all the chop chops and stuff like that. And um, King's has one of the best recovery departments in uh, South Dade. And uh, we are we called from all the police departments and everyone else to, to recover their cars in the lakes. We've been doing water recoveries about for 15 years, 16 years, and um, hopefully everything goes well with this one. Uh, a lot of in South Day, Miami Day, we get a lot of cars in the canals and stuff like that. And um, basically, uh, we got the divers in the water trying to recover the car, and then we got a safety, uh, put a safety chain on it, and uh, winch it in. See what happens from there. What we're doing now is just untangling this rope that we're going to use to slide the hook to the crane down. Um, it gets impossible to carry that hook on the bottom. Sometimes these hooks weigh 60 pounds or more. So we'll just slide the hook right down this line. It makes it easier on the divers. But once you get to the vehicle, it's going to get stirred up when they start trying to hook it up. Um, the best place to hook it up is around the axle, but it depends how the vehicle is laying. If it's upside down, sideways, if it's buried in the mud, we're going to have to uh, you know, dig it out if it is. So it all determines what the uh, vehicle is going to look like and the condition it's in. Basically, uh, we got the divers in the water trying to recover the car, and then we got a safety, uh, put a safety chain on it. And uh, lick it in. See what happens from there. I got it. One more lick. Uh, right now they're taking the hook down the uh, stationary line because of being in the weight of the hook is so heavy. And they're gonna go down, put the hook on the line, slide it down the rope. And then when they get to the vehicle, they're gonna uh, hook up the vehicle with the hook and cable. Come up, come up. Let us know it's hooked up and uh, fastened tightly and then they'll attempt to take the vehicle out of the water. Um, some of the hazards that uh, divers that occur with divers is one, uh, sharp edges. If there's some torn metal around the vehicle, um, that's why it's important to wear gloves. Um, if there's any kind of fishing line, fishing lures, 
they can get hooked up on or wrapped around any kind of debris around a vehicle or shopping cart. So other than a normal car itself, you have to worry about other debris. It could be big uh, semi-tires. You never know until you get down there. So that's why when the visibility is poor, you actually actually take your time. And you have to search around the vehicle, make sure there's no obstructions, and hopefully there's no body in it. If there's a body and they happen to find one, they need to come up and let us know because then it'll become a crime scene. And then we have to call law enforcement to come pull the vehicle, bag the body, and go through their process. then we have to go back down there and rehook it up again. It was a very slow, tedious process. Can I take a chain down there? No chain. No chain. I'm going to do anything. The axle. All right, right around the axle. Brake down, okay. You got to wrap around the brake down. Oh, the car could have moved. It could have flipped over. It could have spun around. It could have just came loose. These are the problems that you have to deal with. Um, nothing goes by plan. So now we'll take a chain down there and uh, hook it up to the chain and hopefully get a good spot where it, uh, it won't come loose. But these are things that happen. It's not, uh, it's not uh, rocket science and it's not easy as uh, everybody thinks, but there are things that do go wrong. Come out like that? Okay, well, folks, we uh, just got that car out of the water. It seemed to be an old Volkswagen. We thought it was a small SUV, but it seemed to be an old Volkswagen. Uh, it's been down there a very long time, and um, now they're going to take it to uh, a flatbed. Police have come out, try to get some information. And from there, uh, it'll take its process. <coughs> Emergency brake was on. But that's how it goes, folks. Sometimes it goes quick. And uh, unfortunately, this time the cable kept slipping off, which is just nature of the business. And we have to make sure that before they pull that vehicle, it's on there tight. And one thing we got to worry about is that cable snapping. Make sure everybody's out of the way so nobody does get hurt. And safety is always the first thing we take care of. Of 
since we're here, we're gonna probably just go maybe up to the end of that gate. I don't think the car will go any further than that. And we'll start back it. here and get up to that gate. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll search up to here, here and then go, and the then go down and there. Spot and then yeah. do the one. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Yeah. And then we'll search know. we'll search up to about the end of that gate. And then we'll go back and check the other area and uh we're gonna put the ball out just in case anybody decides to come with a jet ski. Um, Perry, make sure everybody gets your gear. Have everybody get all their gear staged out. What we're looking for today? All right, we're gonna be looking for a William Naylor who's been missing since 2005. So it's probably a big vehicle. It's uh, green in color. So it's gonna blend in with the background. Uh, the way the uh, dive box is gonna go is Marissa's gonna, it's coming. She'll be uh, a line tender. She can't get in the water, she's sick. I got Perry as a line tender for the first dive because we have maybe two or three different locations. Um, the first divers in the water will be Kent, Lindsay, uh, and Todd. You, you get the first three, We'll be in the water, it might be four. Um, Perry, I think I'll get you in the water. So those are the four divers in the head. Todd, Perry, Lindsay, and Kent. Um, Gianni, you and Marissa will be line tennis first. On the second location, you guys, uh, she'll be, you'll be in the water, and then I'll have somebody else. Because we're gonna search from here to where the ball is, then we gotta go to another location towards the back. Check on that spot. And then we need to go by 95 and check that uh, canal right there. Uh, the, the old man had dementia and uh, Alzheimer's. Apparently he trashed his house. Uh, he's been missing since 2005 and he left around 12.30 at night. So we're thinking he might have sh um, short changed that ramp going southbound and drove over the tracks straight into the canal. Kent and I were out there yesterday looking at it and it's our possibility. Um, we don't know how deep it is, but it is kind of nasty. So I bought some extra hoods. So I definitely want everybody to wear a hood on that canal, whoever's going in the water. This one's not too bad, but if you want a hood, let me know anyway. When we do the line tending, guys, remember it's a slow walk. Divers, do not let go of the rope. All right, make sure you hold on. Uh, we'll give you the probe, use the probe. If it's real sooty, make sure you check in the soot. See if anything is in there, hard surface wise, other than ground. If somebody happens to find something, Make sure you pull the rope so everybody can stop. All right, uh, three hard pulls, that means you found something. Emergency, four hard pulls. Because we'll have, remember, we'll have two people on the line. And everybody just stop, come up and feel that line pull. Everybody surface, all right? Um, any emergencies come up. Uh, work on your breathing um, and take it slow. Let's not rush this. Um, I don't know how far a car could have drifted. If he drove, he probably drove straight, either straight from that parking lot into there, but we'll start here in case he made it came this way. Let's see, uh, everybody get their gear set up. My divers are gonna dive. We'll get, get your flight suits. And like I said earlier, guys, just want me to use flight suits. Today, when the sun comes up, it's gonna be hot as hell. In a wetsuit, you're gonna bake. With this, you're gonna be a little bit cooler, all right? And once you get out of water, the fire department's gonna hold you guys down, decontaminate you. The only thing I needed, which I called yesterday, um, later on today, I can get a contact number, and you know, you guys know, especially the other one I was going to ask, but I told you to pop up for the day.
remember a couple of these guys have gone through a crime scene class. Yeah, we'll recover, we have body bags. You know, if that was an aspect of us doing anything. Um, usually they'll come out and have us check out a vehicle, get a tag of in, uh, mark it for them. If they want us to pull it, we'll hook it up. If that will leave it, we'll mark it. So, yeah, so give me a call if you got anything and we got you ready for the wash now. Okay, I really, like I said, I really appreciate this. It's hard sometimes to get because I know the guys are called and everything else. Yeah. And our station is two minutes away, so. Yeah, right over there. Yeah, yeah if you want to know if the engine's busy, then we'll pull we'll, we'll something. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, we'll pull up out of the truck problem. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, you got it already? Uh, we're looking for a Ford um, Thunderbird, older vehicle, uh, in the mid-90s, green in color. So with the murkiness of the canal, as you can see, it's a sunny day, and we still have no visibility. Uh, the cars will be really hard to find if, if it is in here because of the color of the vehicle and the murkiness of the water. Uh, each diver has a probe, a two-foot piece of PVC piping, an inch in diameter, and they use that as a feeler. In case there's any alligators or there's a vehicle, they, they can tap without cutting their hands open on uh, ripped metal or anything of that nature. Um, if we find something, they're gonna pull the line three times and we'll mark it and see what it is, try to get information off the vehicle. If it isn't here, if we pull the line four times, it's an emergency, all three divers come up. The second search we did, we were able to find um, seven cars. Sometimes it's kind of hard to detect what's inside of the car. You know, some of them are in there for quite a bit, so you have a lot of stuff in it, you know, growing and stuff like that. But um, we had found weapons, um, but no body remains yet. Right now they're doing pretty good, they're all online. Uh, we're gonna be going down to where the ball is, search the, uh, this area here, and then we're gonna be going to another location. 
We're looking for uh, Mr. William Nyler, who left his house. He has Alzheimer's, elderly man, left his house in his car. So we're looking for his vehicle. This is the canal that's right, his apartment was right here in this corner here. So it's possible that he could be in this canal and that's who we're looking for right now. He's been missing since 2000. We have a car. Go down so you can get a 10 number or a VIN number. from the missing person that we have here, Mr. Nyler. Um, we have the divers now trying to identify the um, tag and to see if we can somehow get some numbers off of it. And um, hopefully we'll see if we have a come across this missing person. All right, guys, bring the tag number over, come on over to the shore, and we'll talk about it. Just follow the line back over. Okay, what do you got for a tag number? That's it. That's him. Is that the car? That's the car. Oh. Hey, Lindsay, what's the tag number? E57 VIX. Oh. Okay, okay. the, the tag number that we got on the vehicle is the missing person, Mr. Nyler. That is his tag number. Uh, we found him. We can let the family know that we have some closure now for them. Now we have to contact Cypress Creek uh, PD and uh, go from there. Uh, the divers did a great job. We marked the vehicle, and now we just need to let the authorities know. Great job, guys. I had the feeling it was here the whole time. The police department told us this wasn't deep enough for a car to be in uh, because it was only eight feet deep. Uh, if you know anything about vehicles, Cars can sink in six feet of water, seven feet of water, 50 feet of water, because most cars are not eight feet tall. Um, it took us 20 minutes to find this vehicle. We, w we went exactly approximately maybe 40, 45 yards. Uh, the vehicle is located right next to his house, where his apartment is, and he's been missing since 2005. Most likely, there might be remains in the vehicle, They'll probably be on the floorboard. There's nothing left of a body. Probably just bones. Um, if that's the issue, he could also dump the vehicle and walk away. But at that age, with the problems he had, that's not likely. So there could be remains in the vehicle. Uh, for the family, I think they're going to be happy that they have some closure once we contact them. And um, the divers did a great job today uh, on locating the, uh, the vehicle. How do you find the car? Uh, we're doing our regular procedures, holding on to the rope got to a really crowded area. 
and you can see the back fin of the car. And then as we start notifying the, uh, the other divers. You can tell from the way it looks on the outside, it was, it's been there quite a few years. The, water, the glasses are all, all dirtied up, you know, from the muck and the soot and the dirt. And the, the car since two, supposed to be in there since 2005. Florida got a lot of bodies of water, you know, like these canals and rivers. People never know how many people actually drive into them. And somebody got to get them out. And happily enough, I, I know Derek and we get involved in this type of activities. Okay. Uh, windows are rolled up, one's partially, we can't see inside to see if there any remains. Okay. But uh, within 20 minutes, we found a vehicle, uh, identified it, marked it, and now uh, it became a crime scene. And we're waiting for um, the crime scene investigators to come out, and uh, we're just standing by. Um, the uh, Margate Fire Department came out, hosed down the divers. There was a lot of fluid in the water, like gas and oil, uh, which is very common. So now it's just a matter of waiting to see what's going to happen. And uh, like I said, it was a successful dive, and uh, I'm glad we got the vehicle for the family. Today we were looking for Mr. William Nyler, who's been missing since 2005. We did look for him in a few canals when he first went missing but we decided to go back through some old case files and we were decided to take a look at this canal where he lived one more time. And so we went in the canal today and we did locate his vehicle. And most likely he is in the vehicle. So we do have his family members coming now. So hopefully they'll have some closure. He's been missing for a long time. Once the uh, crime scene investigator comes out, determines what he wants to do, uh, we either get the okay or not okay to hook up the vehicle and pull out of the water. Um, in the event of that, we'll put two divers in. Uh, they'll hook up the vehicle around by the back axle of the vehicle or the front axle, whichever is easier to get to, and pull it from the water.